Can I invite the panelists to the podium, please? Hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Mansouri. Uh, I'm the director of the FAO Investment Center uh, based here in, in Rome. And I'm very happy today to moderate this very important uh, panel. I would like to welcome you all to this special event entitled Catalyzing uh, Food Systems Transformation, the food system window of the UN Joint SDG Fund. Uh, FAO welcomes uh, that food systems transformation uh, has been identified as one of the transformative entry points to bring the SDGs back on track. Uh, the food systems window of this fund anticipates 350 million over five years of catalytic funding to facilitate national cross-sectoral leadership and multi-stakeholder implementation. Uh, this is a rare opportunity to direct financing to the governance of agri-food systems transformation, which is so essential, as we all know, and yet so often forgotten as a vital accelerator of the transformation. Since the summit, we all know that we must harness each country's specific agri-food systems finance architecture. And in today's context of scarce finance, public and private, domestic and external fin financing, more innovative finance must strategically incentivize the much needed transformations in the longer run. So the purpose of this important special event is to present the windows ad added value in connecting UN country teams, short-term catalytic support on policy and governance to the longer-term efforts from governments and agri-food systems actors, especially from the food finance architecture to drive, accelerate, expand, and deepen national agri-food systems transitions. What is key about this fund is its purpose to be a catalyst in the way of working. What does this mean? It means strengthening national capacities, leadership, and planning for longer-term change. It means enhancing a systemic food systems mindset to weigh trade-offs in all decision-making. It means also identifying 
effective entry points in terms of policy reform, investments, innovation, and it also means fostering knowledge sharing and learning uh, along the way. So the fund is meant to be an accelerator of change, meaning that it will enable quickly pulling the short-term triggers for longer-run transformative change. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, dear panelists, we look forward to learning from your ideas and hearing your concrete proposals on how to maximize the complementarity between your institution and mandates and the food systems window. We at FAO and the larger UN stand ready to support these efforts. So allow me first to introduce as our keynote speaker, Her Excellency Amina Mohammed, UN Deputy Secretary General. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, excellencies, friends, ladies and gentlemen. The UN Secretary General um, over the past year has sounded the alarm that the world is not on track to achieve the 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. Only about 12% of our SDG targets are on track and nearly half are moderately or severely off track, with 37% showing no change at all. As we approach the midpoint of the 2030 Agenda, we know that the SDGs are in deep trouble, hunger levels at levels that not seen since 2005. If the current trends continue, by 2030, we're going to have 575 million people who will still live in extreme poverty, and nearly 670 million will suffer from hunger. So transforming our food systems is one key to getting the world back on track and reversing these worrying trends. The Food Systems Summit, convened by the SG two years ago, offered a vision on how to redesign our food systems that could unlock the opportunities for progress across all the SDGs. Since then, 122 countries have adopted national pathways for food systems. They have embarked on implementing these through integrated processes, supported by national conveners, amazing people, and in many cases, these pathways have been reflected in national plans and laws and regulations and in investment strategies to try to mobilize public and private financial resources. The 101 national voluntary reports that, we, uh, that were submitted to the food system stock take show that countries are doing their part. We know that progress is still too slow to meet the demands and the expectations and food systems are still unable to make nutritious food available and accessible to everyone everywhere. And they're not delivering the decent jobs and the livelihoods for those who work in the food and agriculture sectors. And nor are they contributing as they should to the fight against the triple crisis of climate, pollution and biodiversity loss. The hidden and social, economic and environmental costs associated with today's food systems are amounting to a staggering 12 trillion US dollars. And this scale of losses is clearly enough to undermine decades of collective development achievements. Meanwhile, the spillover effects of our ineffective and inefficient food systems are also deeply damaging. These impacts go beyond borders, and they can trigger vicious cycles of social, geopolitical, economic, and environmental crisis. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I believe there are several reasons for this disappointing lack of progress. First, several ongoing and interlinked crises from the COVID-19 pandemic response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine have added new levels of complexity to food systems that were already failing to deliver in important ways. Second major reason is that many countries lack funding to catalyze and coordinate their plans. Without this, they struggle to attract the longer-term financial investments that are needed to create transformation in the lives of people. The joint SDG fund window on food systems being launched today is our effort to try to tackle the support that will be needed to address this lack of funding and a turn around the situation. It will bring life into food systems investment strategies that could be supported by the UN and the national food systems conveners. 
It will also catalyze the rapid and system-wide action needed for food system transformation under the UN Food Systems Hub. In addition, support of the RC system and the UN development system could help to create strategic partnerships at the national level, regional and global levels for food system transformation, working with all stakeholders. This is a huge ecosystem of dynamism. The joint SDG funds food system window would serve as a mechanism to mobilize financing and expertise on food systems from stakeholders across sectors geographies, and of course, constituencies. It offers a unique opportunity to drive the implementation of national food system pathways steered by government. And it provides a platform to leverage broader investments through blended financing and partnership with the private sector. A fully capitalized food system window will play a critical role in mobilizing broader support and financing from domestic public funding and private sector investments for food systems. It will help turn national priorities to realities with an impact that does go far beyond the food systems, helping to rescue all the SDGs and to reshape the, financial, the global financial architecture. I'd like at this point to thank the Federal Republic of Germany as the first mover for their substantial contribution to the window. And we trust that many more states and colleagues and stakeholders would join Germany in helping to change food systems into SDG accelerators at the country level. I look forward to today's panel to show us what member states, foundations, international financing institutions, the private sector and the UN can achieve when we join forces around a common and transformational agenda. Let's commit, commit to invest in hope, hope for sustainable food systems, and hope for a more prosperous future for everyone on a healthy planet in meeting the SDGs. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Excellency. Uh, let us now listen to the voices of the national conveners and uh, you know, some other uh, actors uh, from the field uh, in a short video. Can we go ahead with the video, please? We consider the food system approach as a holistic approach towards resolving the key challenges facing different variables within the ecosystem of the economic activity to drive the food security and sustainability, to unlock the mostly among the bottlenecks in the entire value chain, which is financing and the availability of the land. The questions alimentary are impacted by the factors multidimensional, the factors economic, the factors social, and the factors environment. The challenge of getting interinstitutional coordination mechanisms and a clarity around who is leading processes to ensure they are carried forward in an interinstitutional manner. The second one is the issue of funding in terms of available resources. This is where the Joint SDG Fund comes in fostering a whole-of-government approach to food systems transformation and creating incentives to forge the innovative partnerships required. In view of renforcing the governance and the financing of the systems alimentaires, the Niger pleads in favor of a real change of the paradigm and of the budgetary public and of donors to turn towards the common sectoral funds. To further progress, this effort requires donor coordination to channel the investments that support our medium and long-term goals. And promoting evidence-based investment framework, ensuring no one is left behind. This system approach is essential for allowing the country to provide secure food, better nutrition, and reduce poverty. Que esta transformación no solamente ve a los componentes de salud, sino también enfoque sus esfuerzos a tener un sistema alimentario que procure un ambiente eh, cada vez más saludable, un planeta más sano. Along and across the environment, people input processes, infrastructure, institutions, markets, and trade. The country has turned to modern technology and innovation, including climate-resilient crop varieties, hydroponics, greenhouse farming, and the use of digital monitoring tools that improve decision-making. We supported job creation, reduced food insecurity, improved sustainable agricultural practices, 
and most important of all, we empowered vulnerable communities, local farmers, women, and youth. We need the continued support of the Joint SDG Fund and of the Food System Coalition to deliver the change in mindsets, decision-making, financing flows, and innovation that are urgently needed for people and the planet. The Joint SDG Fund is crucial because it is so catalytic and a food systems approach is that accelerator. Food systems link together all the socioeconomic sectors, transformation towards productive, effective development and contribute to achievement of all sustainable development goals. Many thanks. Um, before moving to the uh, uh, panelists, I would like just to uh, mention that uh, Her Excellency Amina Mohammed might need to leave before. Uh, so uh, this is what I was told. So you are most welcome. It's an honor to have you with us. And, but please uh, feel free to, uh, uh, to leave if, uh, if need be. Uh, now, I would like to encourage you all to read the bios of uh, the uh, various panelists. Uh, uh, distinguished panelists on the flyer for this event and on the net. Uh, panelists, you will have each four minutes. Uh, when one minute remains, my colleagues will show a yellow card. Uh, when your time is up, I hope you will not receive a second yellow. Uh, as you all know, what does this mean? So um, we, we will try to, we have the timekeepers, and we will try to, to keep it really uh, to the time, and we started a bit late. Uh, so allow me to introduce Her Excellency, uh, Ms. Uh, Jennifer Mojica, uh, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, uh, Republic of Colombia. Uh, Su Excelencia, sustainable food systems that ensure good nutrition while strengthening social cohesion and restoring the environment is a key priority for Colombia. Uh, how do you expect the joint SDG fund food systems window to contribute to the operationalization of Colombia's national pathways for transforming uh, food systems? Excelencia, tiene la palabra. Gracias. You, you can just speak from the podium, thank you. Buenos días. Para Colombia, tener sistemas alimentarios sostenibles es muy importante, teniendo en cuenta que estamos en una situación crítica de, de inseguridad alimentaria. Un tercio de nuestra población es, no tiene acceso eh, suficiente a alimentos y en zonas rurales y en familias de comunidades campesinas, indígenas y negras, o cuando la jefatura de hogar es, son mujeres, el nivel de inseguridad supera a la mitad de las familias colombianas. Por ello, necesitamos generar una serie de inversiones profundas para hacer que la agricultura de nuestro país pueda alimentarnos. El campo colombiano cuenta con todo el potencial para acabar con el hambre y alimentar al país y también alimentar al mundo. Nosotros podemos ser uno de los países con mayor potencial de crecimiento de la agricultura. Eh, tenemos una disponibilidad de tierras para desarrollar, somos el segundo país en el mundo con mayor disposición de agua dulce y somos tal vez el que mayor agrobiodiversidad tiene. Pero para ello la ventana de sistemas alimentarios del fondo de los ODS podría ser una oportunidad para que estos países en vía de desarrollo puedan contar con el financiamiento para tener más iniciativas. Especialmente en nuestro país necesitamos poder luchar contra el hambre cero a partir de la inversión en agricultura familiar campesina, en la transformación de estos productos en alimentación y en poder lograr generar ventanas de comercialización de productos sanos, saludables y orgánicos, que es lo que esta crisis climática demanda. Para incrementar nuestro desempeño y sostenibilidad, avanzando a partir de los alimentos tradicionales y los saberes locales. 
Durante esta cumbre hemos escuchado de manera reiterada voces sobre la problemática del hambre que nos azota mundialmente y de la fragilidad de los sistemas alimentarios frente al cambio climático. Basta una tormenta, una granizada, un incendio, una inundación para hacer que millones de personas sufran de hambre. Y estamos ahora por padecer un fenómeno del niño que eh, esperamos se extienda eh, 15 meses en, lo, en el próximo año y tenemos que hacer un plan de contingencia en los países que vamos a estar más expuestos a estas sequías. Me parece que esta es una oportunidad para exigir más apoyo de la comunidad internacional frente a, a esto que nos une. El mundo en una situación de crisis climática y en una situación de hambre en la que hemos coincidido estos días necesita acciones urgentes, pero no como filantropía. Por ejemplo, Colombia tiene recursos, tiene la tierra, el agua, el sol, la biodiversidad y los campesinos que se dedican a trabajar en la agricultura. Nuestro problema de tierras lo estamos atacando a partir de políticas y de decisiones políticas contundentes en materia de reforma agraria. Pero para transformar esta situación no es suficiente la decisión política de los estados ni la construcción de programas y planes internos ni eh, únicamente las voluntades o el consenso al interior de un país. Se necesita contar con el financiamiento y el capital en donde el mundo entero debería tener una corresponsabilidad con los países que más sufrimos las consecuencias del cambio climático. Para transformar esto, para lograr que la producción de alimentos en una lógica económica pueda crecer, es necesario una combinación de esfuerzos y de recursos de manera eficiente, pero sobre todo una agricultura social, ambiental y culturalmente sostenible. La lógica de los monocultivos que nos unió en la agricultura en el pasado fracasó por no tener estas últimas tres perspectivas. Esta es una tragedia mundial que debe corregirse y vemos esta ventana de inversión de los ODS como la oportunidad de canalizar esa voluntad política en inversiones concretas. Muchas gracias, señora ministra. Uh, allow me now to introduce uh, His Excellency Radwan Ag Mohamed Ali, uh, Minister and Commissaire uh, for the Security Alimentaire, uh, Republic of, uh, of Mali. Uh, Monsieur le ministre, uh, the government of Mali has a strong commitment on food systems transformation to deliver food security and good nutrition for all? What are the implementation gaps that Mali faces and how could the joint SDG fund food systems window support Mali, particularly at the local level? Excellence, you have the parole. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Moderateur. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs les membres de ce haut panel, Mesdames et Messieurs les participants à ces panels, euh, en effet, l'atteinte des objectifs durables à l'horizon 2003 euh, nécessite la mise en place euh, donc des systèmes alimentaires euh, plus résilients aux chocs climatiques, adaptés euh, aux pratiques et préférences, aux besoins donc et préférences alimentaires de nos populations et surtout durable, qui s'inscrivent dans la durabilité. Pour cela, le Mali met en œuvre de, trois, trois politiques distinctes, mais qui sont euh, dont la gouvernance, est, est mise en, la gouvernance et la mise en œuvre sont mises en cohérence. Il s'agit de la politique nationale de développement rural, la politique nationale de nutrition et la politique nationale euh, de sécurité alimentaire et nutritionnelle. Ceci pour introduire donc mon propos. Je vais, compte tenu du temps euh, très limité qui nous est réservé, aller directement à la, aux réponses donc à, à cette question. Au niveau des principaux goulots d'étranglement, sans être exhaustif, je vais citer quelques contraintes liées notamment donc à la vulnérabilité au changement climatique. Le Mali est sujet à des sécheresses et des inondations qui affectent la production agricole et la disponibilité alimentaire au moins une année sur deux 
le Mali est confronté à ces phénomènes et bon, mal, bon an, mal an, ce sont près de 4 millions de personnes qui se retrouvent à une insécurité alimentaire modérée à sévère. L'insuffisance des infrastructures agricoles telles que les routes, les entrepôts de stockage et de conservation, les systèmes d'irrigation sont pour beaucoup inadéquats et insuffisants, ce qui entrave la commercialisation et la distribution des produits alimentaires. Une faible productivité agricole, l'agriculture au Mali est caractérisée par, pour la plupart par de petites exploitations agricoles avec des rendements faibles, en partie en raison de l'utilisation limitée des technologies modernes et de l'accès à l'engrais bon marché. Et cette situation est empirée par la guerre en Ukraine qui rend les engrais physiquement inaccessibles et dans certaines zones reculées du pays et pratiquement économiquement inaccessibles partout. La pauvreté et l'accès limité aux ressources, aux ressources financières notamment, les populations rurales pauvres ont du mal à accéder aux ressources nécessaires pour améliorer leur sécurité alimentaire et nutritionnelle, comme l'accès aux sémences, les engrais et les connaissances agricoles. L'insécurité du fait du terrorisme, ce phénomène affecte l'ensemble des piliers de la sécurité alimentaire, entraînant une grande fluctuation des prix des denrées de première nécessité. Comment la fenêtre sur les systèmes alimentaires du Fonds commun pour les ODD pourrait aider mon pays Depuis 2019, comme je le disais, le Mali dispose d'une politique nationale de sécurité alimentaire et nutritionnelle. La fenêtre des systèmes alimentaires du Fonds pour les ODD pourrait contribuer à concrétiser la politique du Mali en résultat probant pour tous les ODD, en particulier au niveau décentralisé et de plusieurs manières. Sur le plan financier, c'est le nerf de la guerre du temps. Sur ce point, la fenêtre de le système alimentaire peut fournir des ressources financières ou aider les Mali à mobiliser ces ressources pour investir dans des projets et programmes visant à renforcer les systèmes alimentaires au niveau local et national. Nous sommes dans la dynamique d'organiser une table ronde euh, pour cela et c'est le lieu de remercier les partenaires qui, qui s'y impliquent déjà et de relancer la FAO pour continuer son accompagnement dans ce sens. Cela pourrait inclure le financement des projets d'irrigation. Le Mali dispose d'un vaste réseau hydrogra hydrographique qui permet de disposer d'eau directement à partir de, de forages, du fait de la nappe qui est très bien alimentée. Les fleuves Niger, seul le fleuve Niger, il y a le fleuve du Sénégal aussi, que le Mali est arrosé par plusieurs fleuves. Le fleuve Niger est 1 600 km sur le territoire malien. Des projets d'infrastructures de, de stockage des produits agricoles, de stockage et de conservation. Il y a bien sûr des besoins pour développer d'autres initiatives visant à améliorer la productivité agricole et surtout à rendre disponibles et accessibles des produits qui permettent d'améliorer les aspects nutritionnels. Sur le renforcement des capacités, le Fonds peut également soutenir des initiatives de renforcement des capacités pour les agriculteurs, les, arriveurs, les éleveurs et les autres acteurs du secteur alimentaire. Dans le secteur des innovations et de la recherche, la fenêtre sur le système alimentaire peut encourager l'innovation et la recherche dans les domaines de l'agriculture, la sécurité alimentaire et au-delà. Sur les mécanismes de suivi et évaluation, ceci est très important. Je vais conclure par ce, ce point. Les processus, les processus, parce que beaucoup d'argent est souvent dépensé dans des résultats mitigé, le Mali, avec l'appui de l'Union européenne, a mis en place un mécanisme de suivi et évaluation reposant sur l'architecture, les missions et les fonctions du dispositif national de sécurité alimentaire. Actuellement, ce système est en train d'être déployé au niveau national, du niveau national jusqu'au niveau des communes, et des initiatives de ce genre qui permettent de renforcer les responsabilités et le rôle de l'État, et surtout la veille citoyenne, sont à encourager, et c'est les liés ici de remercier de nouveau tous les partenaires qui s'impliquent à nos côtés dans notre lutte quotidienne pour l'atteinte des ODD à l'horizon 2030. Je vous remercie. Merci, merci beaucoup, monsieur, euh, monsieur le ministre. Euh, je voudrais, maintenant qu'on a entendu une perspective latino-américaine, 
uh, in perspective africaine uh, go to the more Asian perspective and invite Her Excellency Dr. Vivi Yulaswati, Deputy Minister for Maritime and Natural Resources Affairs at the Ministry of National Development Planning of the Republic of Indonesia. Uh, Excellency, as an advocate for sustainable food systems and healthy diets, in your opinion, how could this new window of the Joint SDG Fund help to mobilize key stakeholders in your country in terms of introducing innovative measures for transforming the food systems? The floor is yours, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Indonesia is strongly committed to achieving the SDGs. There are 124 SDGs global targets that have been aligned in the national and sub-national development plans. The targets to attain SDGs are also defined in the Indonesian SDGs roadmap. It has estimated that Indonesia needs about 4.75 trillion US dollars up until 2030. It consists of public and private funding and leaves around a uh, financing gap for around 1 trillion US dollars up until 2030 also. To align the national priorities with various financing schemes and strategies, Indonesia has developed the Integrated National Financing uh, Framework, or the INFF. We have also created the SDGs Investors Map and SDGs Financing Hub to synchronize financing resources with program acti and activities of both government and non-state actors in the spirit of achieving SDGs and leaving no one behind. <coughs> Working with the, ND with the UNDP, we have worked on a CIS program to accelerate SDGs investment in Indonesia. Some of the progress, among others, are the issuance of the SDGs bonds that have been more than one billion US dollar uh, of issuance, and also blue bond that have been issued two months ago for about uh, 100 million uh, US dollar issuance to accelerate the blue economy development in Indonesia. This stock taking moment provides us an opportunity to recalibrate our strategy and urgent actions in transforming our food systems to be more nutritious, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. In this regard, there are several strategies that we want to implement further. First, as it has been mandated in our law number 18, 2012 uh, on food, the food system should be based on local biodiversity and social culture. Hence, localizing food system is one of the means by which we are transforming our food system to include the diversity across regions. Second, Indonesia has taken into account agri-food system transformation and the nexus of food, energy, and water, or few, as crucial parts in our next long-term development plan, 2025-2045. It will develop further in our mid-term development plan in every five years period. The third, science-based and data-driven, such as modeling in the impact of policy interventions, analyzing the cost of diets, and calculating the interlinkages among the SDGs targets are crucial to direct us in prioritizing the allocations of the limited funding on the programs that will leverage the achievement of the SDGs on time. The fourth, continue practicing climate smart agriculture and supporting smart scale farmers in modernizing agriculture. And fifth, mapping and developing bioeconomy and bioprospecting, particularly in relate to tropical agriculture, as well as the aquatic foods. To conclude, we must redouble our joint efforts at all levels and foster an, an understanding of the multifaceted challenges we face. We must remain hopeful by building a more nutritious, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable food system it is for our future and also the next generations. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency. Now that we've heard from the countries, from, from the regions, and I must say you have been very disciplined with, with time. I didn't see, I see once or twice 
a, a yellow card. Uh, we can move now to more, you know, the finance perspective and uh, invite uh, two uh, IFIs, international financial institutions. Uh, let me first then invite uh, His Excellency Maali uh, Dr. Mohammed Al Jasser, uh, President of the Islamic Development Bank. Maali uh, Rais, we are all too well aware of constant exposure of our economies to diverse shocks which expose historical structural fragilities of our systems, irrespective of income levels. How can the Islamic Development Bank help to leverage public and private investments in support of the joint SDG fund? Uh, Shukran Jazilan, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I am very glad uh, to be here with you to share uh, our experiences at the Islamic Development Bank. As you know, uh, most of our member countries uh, come from the south and they are affected very significantly by all of these crises that we are talking about, be it uh, climate or be it uh, uh, issues of uh, food shortages uh, and, and, and the rest that we have been discussing over the past uh, three days. Uh, as we all know, money is fungible. This is very important. Fungibility of money is there for us to use to optimize how we allocate and use those resources. They will always be limited, scarce financial resources. That is a given. But what is not given is that we, there is a lot that we could do to optimize those scarce resources that we have uh, in our institutions and, and in, in our countries. Uh, for example, in the Islamic Development Bank, we have several uh, uh, initiatives, but one of them was, we call it lives and livelihoods. That combined or blended finance from philanthropic sources, uh, be it the King Salman um, Center, be it the Bill and Melinda Gates, be it the Qatar uh, uh, Development Fund, and others have, have given resources, plus our own because we, ha we are short of grant component, but we have worked very well with uh, others to combine our own market-based resources with their grant uh, uh, resources and combine them to really be able to finance a lot more projects in the food uh, uh, and in, the, de in the, the other developmental challenges. We have also developed the Sukuk, which is the uh, Islamic uh, Sharia compliant uh, uh, bonds. I mean, they're more or less really plain bonds. That's an alternative source of financing that is uh, uh, equity based. So uh, we can we can expand those uh, those uh, resources. Of course, it, to implement projects or to move the development process, it's not enough just to have finance you need a lot of work to prepare those projects. So we have used also the United Nations resources, thank you very much, uh, uh, to develop some of these projects and help with it. We have also uh, uh, worked on the issues of bankability of, of projects through these uh, types of institutions and uh, collaboration with, with other uh, participants in the global uh, financial markets. We have also used the reverse linkage because in the South, there are some great experiences, but we have to go and reach out and bring them to help in other uh, countries uh, uh, in the South. And this has been, has been working reasonably well in, in some of the countries that have developed uh, great uh, uh, abilities. So all of this is really going to help us with what I believe, and I, I talked about yesterday and the day before, 
that agricultural development is really the name of the game. It's the secret that is going to unlock the development potential of our countries. And if we continue to neglect agriculture, you, can, you know what to expect. We're not going to go, get uh, anywhere. So food security, climate financing uh, are, are very important. And the Islamic Development Bank, when these uh, problems or crises hit, we put a program of $10.5 billion to help our member countries with, uh, cope with the food problems and agricultural development. And we also put a, a program of $13 billion, and it has gone up to $24 billion with the Arab development institutions joining hands with us also. So it's $24 billion to really finance projects that are very environmental and climate friendly, but very well entrenched in the developmental uh, 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 sphere. So without uh, further ado, there is a lot that we can do in terms of optimization, be it in the finance, be it in the project preparation, be it in the, in the, uh, in the combining of climate considerations with developmental uh, considerations. For example, energy transition, there is a lot of talk about it. Well, we need just just energy transition, not any transition. And especially if you go to these countries that are really poor, you know that that means a lot to them. And I think we, uh, we would be remiss if we did not pay sufficient attention to these issues. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, Her Excellency Hassatoun Sele, Vice President of Finance, for Finance and Chief Financial Officer of the African Development Bank uh, Group. Uh, Madame Hassatou, uh, how could the African Development Bank uh, provide support to scale successful and innovative interventions to enhance the effectiveness and speed of the food systems transformation? Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good uh, morning, uh, everybody. And thank you very much for organizing this session today and having the African Development Bank provide its views. Um, the uh, African Development Bank investment in the African food systems is encoded in our Food Feed Africa strategy. And we've invested about $8 billion to date um, in order to contribute to the SDG number two, which is zero hunger. Uh, these, the $8 billion have benefited about 250 million people on the continent, and they have benefited from various interventions, our various interventions in the agricultural sector. Our strategy does put a special emphasis on the deployment of large-scale, proven agricultural technologies, on the development of rural infrastructure, on the development of special uh, agro-processing uh, industrial zones, and also on um, the private sector and innovative financing. What are we doing in order to scale up proven technologies? We've set up a platform which is called TAT, the Technologies for Agricultural, um, African Agricultural Transformation, which is a platform be which is being implemented through partners, CGIAR, with the um, uh, national and regional agriculture research institutions and with the private sector. What is very, I mean, some of the key um, realization of TAT, East Africa, 2018, drought. TAT provided water resistant maize, which helped avoid a food, um, a food crisis. In Ethiopia, TAT provided heat tolerant wheat. And with that, Ethiopia has, come, has gone from being an importer of wheat to an exporter of wheat this year. And you've heard the, uh, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister uh, I think, yesterday, or the day before yesterday. So over the past three years, through TAT, we've been able to deliver climate-resilient agriculture technology to 40 million farmers across 11 countries on the continent. To mitigate the perception of African risk in agriculture, we have set up a structured finance facility which is leveraging and catalyzing the private sector or the deployment of capital by the private sector in the agriculture um, uh, of, of Africa. It, is, um, it has backed innovative schemes like the uh, risk sharing facilities in Ghana and in, the, and in Gambia. 
For climate, we have our WISC insurance initiative, the um, ADVIFI, Africa Disaster Risk Financial Program, which is providing grants for a sovereign risk insurance for countries and smallholder farmers. But clearly, all of this is not sufficient, right? Because uh, we've heard it, we are, we are way off the SDG, uh, SDG 2. And what do we need? We need African countries to abide by the common Africa position on agriculture and allocate 10% of their national budgets to agriculture. We need governments to avoid reversal of good agricultural policies and reforms. We need African countries to be able to access green funds. They need the resources. Their access is severely limited. Today, they only access less than 5% of those green funds. At the multilateral development banks level, what do we need? We need more resources in order to scale up, but also replicate effective and innovative structures for accelerating agricultural transformation. We also need more resources to increase our capacity to take on more agricultural risk. Resources coming in the form of grants, in the, you talked about grants, in the form of uh, initiatives such as the special drawing rights, and you know, I talked about that two days ago, an allocation of $25 billion of SDRs to multilateral development banks is $100 billion of added lending capacity for these institutions. And um, the, uh, we need to create also more, uh, actually we need to have the private sector coming at scale. And we can do this by offering the right instruments in order to de-risk their participation. We also need to intensify the capacity building for farmers, but also for financial institutions. And last, we need multilateral development banks, uh, development partners, shareholders, foundations, and philanthropic organizations, NGOs, United Nations, to collaborate even more better than they are doing right now and further strengthen partnerships because we need to create more synergies. We need to leverage on each other's strengths and comparative advantage, but also we need to avoid fragmentation. And there is a lot of fragmentation today. And this initiative today is, um, is about this, is about you know, bringing all of us together and uh, reverse the, uh, the trend that we are uh, embarked on. So thank you very much for launching this SDG fund. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Excellency. Uh, I think we heard about, you know, from two major IFIs, uh, and now we are going to uh, listen to the perspective of a foundation, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. We have with us Mr. Roy Steiner, uh, Senior Vice President of the Rockefeller Foundation Food Initiative. Uh, how does the Rockefeller uh, Foundation Food System Strategy align with the mandates and goals of this uh, joint SDG fund and this new food systems uh, window. Uh, Roy, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for that question. Um, the Rockefeller Foundation was one of the early innovators in impact investing, and so I am delighted that uh, the UN and the SDG fund is being set up because it's ex exactly the kind of innovation we need uh, because it takes a systems approach. It's trying to bring all the UN together and and really address these system issues. And you know, when we've done these true cost accounting analyses of the food system, what is striking is that we've created a value-destroying food system. It destroys more economic value than it creates because we're not taking the entire system in, in play. And it's this kind of cross-cutting innovative financing that we're going to be, has to be part of that solution. Uh, one of the things we've been really focused on is this transition from uh, more conventional ways of doing agriculture to what we're called, what is now being called uh, regenerative agriculture, and, and trying to define that, getting a, 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 a comprehensive definition. We're working with um, a group of 14 other philanthropies to co-create that, uh, and, and that's going to take a lot of innovation because the financing for any transition is is very significant. So um, exploring, we need the full range of things to, do, to, to be relevant to the various different challenges that are out there. Uh, everything from 
uh, credit guarantees to uh, sustainably linked financing to social impact bonds. I know Rabobank has been exploring with some of those with a true value bond and ACORN and others. So we need lots of that out there. Um, I also, uh, we, we are also working with something called the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet and uh, uh, to try to decarbonize the entire agricultural value chain. And that's going to require uh, you know, new business models, but for example, uh, just bringing all the purchasing power together to, to create low-cost, volume-based buying. Th that's another kind of innovative financing that we can really make a 20 to 30 percent difference in the ultimate price of putting in these, uh, these, these renewable energy systems. One, a couple of other thoughts. Um, you know, the shift everybody's been talking about repurposing subsidies. One of the best ways of doing that is to actually fund school feeding. School feeding not only, you know, sets you up for the future of that country, but we find is actually more economically efficient uh, in, in, food tr in, transition, in, in food system transition than just straight on production uh, subsidies. So we need to be thinking quite differently. And I'm going to end with one other thing that you may think is a completely uh, 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 not relevant, but uh, let me challenge you. You know, when you look at uh, overall capital flows into and out, uh, into and out of various um, uh, developing regions, let's say take Africa, the, actually Africa is a net creditor to the world. The question is not how do we get more money into Africa, the question is how does Africa keep its money? Um, you know, $90 billion of illicit flows go out of Africa every year, plus all the debt repayments. So we need innovation in how do we keep money in Africa, for example, and we don't, I don't hear much of that. And that's relevant to the food system because so much of those illicit flows are preventing those, those agricultural value chains uh, to, to develop effectively. So it's a challenge. The UN, I hope, could potentially address some of that, uh, uh, and, and I'll leave it there. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, and thanks for the out-of-the-box uh, thinking as well. Uh, we will integrate it in the system as well uh, later on. Uh, the, uh, uh, our last but not least panelist is uh, Mr. Michael Keller, uh, Chair of the International Agri-Food Network sorry, <clears throat> and Private Sector Mechanism to the UN Committee on World Food Security. Um, Mr. Keller, we are all aware of the critical importance of private financing uh, to food systems transformation, and I think many of the panelists have spoken uh, to that. Uh, at country level, how could the food systems window um, of the joint SDG fund be used to address issues and incentives to increase private investment in food systems, uh, while, of course, respecting the social, environmental standards and encouraging innovation? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Chairs, uh, Your Excellencies, Ministers, um, dear colleagues. Let me just say, um, I'm representing International Agri-Food Network and the private sector mechanism. What means, at the end, I'm representing thousands of thousands of companies, but I would like to focus also, we should not forget, and we forget it a little bit in our discussions, the SMEs. Because the SMEs are driver also of food production, and I think I would like to turn around also this topic. At the end, first of all, I think we would like to thank uh, for the initiative for the food systems window, because as, as a company, it's clear we are speaking about opportunities. We are speaking too much about challenges. I think we should see it also as an opportunity, an opportunity for optimization, but also for co-creation. And I think perhaps the window is funded not a lot, but it can build traction. And I think that's what we are saying. Can we build traction? Yes, how? If we build win-win situation on the ground. And then we'll come back to one point. We all heard during the... Th throughout the day, three days yet. Um, food systems is yeah, concerning 11 SDGs, 11 SDGs. But we are forgetting too much, and we heard it here, it's about also agricultural production. Food systems starts with agricultural production. So, and now the question mark is how we can build traction and win-win. And here we should think about how we can, and the Minister of Colombia mentioned it, 
how we can reach the farmers, how we can together build the traction for, for farmers. And I think this is where we need to think about. And I would like to thank the natural conveners about all what we are doing. But I think we should think beyond. And from the private sector side, it is clear what we can do. Yes, finances is important, but I think we can much more offer than finances. I think what we can offer is um, we can develop models to collaboration, integrative uh, collaboration, but even more important, we can support capacity building. Capacity building also for farmers, because we have a lot of expertise. And perhaps this window can concretely help us also together with the public sector and the private sector to build this capacity building. But we can also share knowledge, research knowledge. I think, you know, we all agree that we need innovation, but we need also to scale up innovation and to be able to reach the farmers together. And I think if this window helps us here to build opportunities also to bridge together, it would be perfect. We can also clearly um, mobilize um, investment, economical, uh, human and capital um, investment, which can create growth on the ground. And yes, financial contribution. I think we mentioned it a lot, but perhaps let me finish on this because I know also we are running out of time. I think the private sector here is ready to advocate together with you for inclusive and co-creative um, solutions. And I would really insist we all agree research and development is important and product development is absolutely critical. Concrete product development on the ground. And I think the private sector, perhaps no better is placed than the private sector to support um, in this um, direction. Therefore, again, I think we are ready um, in our diversity to support and we welcome very positively this initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Uh, uh, Keller. Uh, I think you have heard our, all our panelists, and I think all the interventions had, you know, ideas about the potential, about the positives, about what we can seek together, unleashing uh, investments. Uh, I think uh, water uh, in Mali, the potential that there is, uh, there is there. I think the innovation in finance, uh, the SDG bonds in Indonesia. Uh, I think our IFIs have spoken about optimization, about the right instrument to de-risk investments, especially from the private sector there. And I think, you know, uh, our foundation, uh, Rockefeller Foundation and uh, and the, the network, uh, uh, Mr. Keller, you know, have also brought you know, in uh, what is it, uh, what are the critical entry points for us to transform the, the agri-food systems. Uh, I would like now to give the floor to Her Excellency Ms. Cindy McCain, uh, who is the Executive Director of the World Food Programme. Uh, um, Excellency, could I ask you to share your concluding remarks, thoughts, and some inspiration for us? for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ministers, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and thank you for this important and insightful conversation about the new food systems window of the joint SDG fund. I welcome the specific focus this fund will bring to food security and food systems as part of the broader efforts to support sustainable development. It, is clear, it clearly has enormous potential to fuel progress and catalyze change. As we work together to develop and reinforce the systems which underpin the production and consumption of our food, as we have heard today in many parts of the world, this is and must be an urgent priority. It is key to tackling the underlying drivers of hunger and malnutrition and reducing humanitarian needs over the long term. But as everyone here knows all too well, the principal barrier we face in translating aspiration into action is finance. We can only roll out innovative programs that are proven to work if we have the funding to implement them at scale. Without it, Great ideas are destined to remain stuck on the launch pad and unable to get off the ground. I'm optimistic the new food systems window will enable them to take flight and bring new hope to vulnerable communities around the world. 
I respectfully urge donors to offer generous support. We are counting on your help to succeed. The way the fund has been designed will also encourage greater coordination and collaboration, which is fundamental if we are going to achieve our shared goals. We all need to break out of our silos and move forward together. Critically, the fund will support national priorities and power up partnerships led by governments to drive progress at the country level. It is clear that Amina Mohammed and her team have been listening closely to the needs of national conveyors and country teams, and I fully support this approach. One size fits all solutions are not going to get us to the destination. Finally, the fund offers an opportunity to forge new partnerships across the public and private sectors. Now, more than ever, we need businesses on board to achieve lasting change in our food systems. They can help us develop the smart innovations and solutions required to build resilience and reduce hunger. We will never succeed without their in investment and expertise. Excellencies, as humanitarian needs continue to grow around the world, we need a genuine multi-sectoral partnership to strengthen global food systems and end hunger. The new, new food systems window is our opportunity to bring the shared aspiration to life. We must seize it and step up our efforts to build a more resilient, sustainable future for everyone, no matter where in the world you live. Thank you. Many, many thanks, Excellency. I understand that the interpreters are giving us a bit more time just for two interventions that have been uh, requested from the floor. Uh, Ms. Selena Wright uh, from FAIR. She's not here. Hello. Yes, please. Sorry. Hello. Um, Helena Wright from the FAIR Initiative. Um, we are a 70 trillion investor network focused on sustainable food systems. Uh, I just wanted to mention that investors are already addressing the risks related to food systems, such as climate change, biodiversity loss, and working conditions. And we need policymakers to act in concert. Oh, sorry. Um, so we need policymakers to act in concert to drive the shifts we need to say, see towards a more sustainable food system. That's why investors are really welcoming these efforts announced here today by the SDG Fund. And it's welcome to see all the collaboration between the public and private sector at the moment, such as under the Good Food Finance Network. Um, it's also really welcome to see the efforts to identify positive win-win solutions for both food security and climate change together, such as the roadmap announced by the Director General of the FAO earlier this week. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, last but not least, the uh, Rabobank uh, delegation wants to make an intervention, please. I understand they left, so uh, we can be uh, freed ahead of time. Again, many thanks to all our uh, excellencies, the esteemed colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and let's keep the momentum going. Thanks a lot. Thank you.